Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty, and I am back with three Easter DIYs for you today. So, let's see what we're going to do. We are going to do a bunny sign. You're going to need some of the Hello Hobby chalk paint in Swan, Blush, Pumpkin, Tuscan Sun, and the Waverly chalk paint in the color Celery. You're going to need a glue stick and some wood glue. I have my pencil and my Sharpie for hand lettering, some jute twine, five of the wooden eggs from Dollar Tree, three of the wooden bunnies from Hello Hobby, and a wood round from Dollar Tree. And I have my craft paper booklets from Joanne Fabrics. They were $3.99 each. I've got some moss and some little scrap flower pieces that I'm going to try to use. I have various ribbons. Not sure which ones I'm going to use. I have some Dollar Tree spackle and my paintbrush. So we're going to start out by painting each one of these eggs in each one of these colors of paint. We're also going to stain that wood round with the Antique Wax by Hello Hobby. I like to stain using a baby wipe. Um, I know a lot of people brush it on and then wipe it off, but I feel like I waste more stain doing that, doing it that way. So I like to just dab into the baby wipe or dab into the stain with the baby wipe and just wipe it on. And then I don't feel as though I'm wasting. I don't know, I probably could still be, but I just feel like I don't use as much as when I brush a lot of it on and then wipe it right back off. So now I'm gonna pick out three coordinating colors of this beautiful craft paper from Joanne Fabrics. I love the soft muted colors and oh my gosh, I just, I'm just a pushover for the soft muted colors for spring and Easter. I do like the bright colors sometimes too, but my heart just goes out to the soft ones more so. So that's what I use. This DIY is simple and easy, but it's really very pretty. Is it my number one for the three that I'm going to show you for this video? Nope, it is not. You want to see what my number one is? You got to keep watching. So I'm just applying the paper with a glue stick and smoothing it down with my little scraper from Dollar Tree. I did take the egg that is done in the Hello Hobby White Swan and I did a little bit of hand lettering and pencil. Just some simple printing that says Happy Easter. And I'll go back over it with my Sharpie in just a little bit. So thank you to everyone who stopped in to watch this video today. I am so greatly blessed to have you and very appreciative. If you are new, it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been with me before, thank you so much for coming back. If you've not joined the Cute and Crafty family yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big fat thumbs up and comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell as well so you never miss out on another Cute and Crafty DIY with D. Let's get back into the crafting. I took my farmhouse ribbon and I cut it in half because it was a little wider than I needed. And I made three of the bows for the bunnies. Now I'm just looking at placement for my eggs. I want to see where I want them. I'm going to go in with my Sharpie as promised and darken this lettering up. Also looking at placement for the bunnies, trying to see which way I want them to go. And then we're just going to get these eggs and bunnies glued down using hot glue and some wood glue for that long-term, short-term hold. And there they are. And now I'm just going to add some moss to the bottom. Give it a little bit of texture. So are you guys done with your Easter crafting? We're actually into April. 
Are you tired of seeing Easter crafting? I mean, I can craft Easter forever. I really love it that much, but eventually I am going to move on to my spring and my farmhouse decor crafting. So let me know if you guys are over the Easter crafting, if you're over the bunnies and the carrots, we'll move on to something else because I've got tons of DIYs and farmhouse decor that I'd love to share with you. Comment down below. I would appreciate it. So these are the colors that I chose to make my bow. I'm going to use the burlap pink from Dollar Tree and the burlap neutral ribbon from Dollar Tree as well and some jute twine also from Dollar Tree. I have slowed this bow making process down so that you can see what I'm doing because a viewer asked me to do so. So all I do is take my ribbon and I loop it. This is not anything that I came up with or anything, you know, hard to do. This is from Olivia's Romantic Home. She is amazing. Her link will be in the description box below. I love her channel. Please go check her out. This is called the Olivia Bow. It's very simple. You just make your loops. Just fold your ribbon over itself and you make your loops. So for the pink, I folded it enough to where I've got two loops on each side. And for the neutral burlap ribbon, I'm only going to fold it to make a loop once on each side. And then I'm going to stack that ribbon. I usually go in gradient or variant heights. Like if I want to do three stacks of ribbon, I'll do large, medium, small. Large loops on the bottom, medium in the middle, small on top. I do it in a gradient so that you can see every bow or every loop that I'm going to fluff up. I don't want them all to be the same size. They're easier to see when they go up in succession of size, if that makes sense. You see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to take some ribbon and to make my loops. I'm going to fold it in half evenly. Then I'm going to fold it long ways. And then I'm going to cut at a diagonal. Fold it in half evenly. Fold it long ways. I have the folded top, folded piece at the top and the wire at the bottom facing the floor. And then I just cut up in a diagonal and it gives me my dovetails. Then you just take all of that ribbon and stack it together and pinch it. Depending on the kind of ribbon you use, sometimes that's a little difficult. If you have a really um, good quality, thick ribbon, it can be a little hard to pinch. In which case you may want to use a zip tie. I love using the twine. I like the look of it. So I just make it work. So I'm just going to pinch that as I'm tying it because it's too thick for me to pinch it and hold it together in my hand and tie it at the same time. Again, if I have a thinner ribbon, I can do that, but this is thicker and wired, so it's not easy to do. So I just tied it and let the jute pinch it as I tied it. I love using wired ribbon for this because it's going to hold its shape. If you use a you know, ribbon without the wire edging on it. It just, it's floppy. It's pretty, but it doesn't sit the way you want it to sit. It kind of just does its own thing. So I, I like the wire ribbon so I can shape it and form it and make it lay on my project the way that I want it to. So now I'm fluffing out those loops and I'm pulling down those tails and this bow is done. It's very easy and it comes out pretty every time. So this is the final DIY, you guys. I absolutely love it. And because I could not help myself, I distressed it. I did. I went in with my antique wax, just what I had left on that baby wipe. And I distressed the whole thing. And I did not end up using the bow that I showed you. But I wanted you to see how to make a bow. So I went in with my antique wax and I just rubbed it all over the eggs, all over the bunnies. I just wanted it to look old and weathered, and I love it. 
Moving on to DIY number two, I have some of this Dollar Tree um, material. And I also have one of the bunny signs. I also have Dollar Tree Spackle, Mod Podge. I have my Hello Hobby chalk paint and some Waverly chalk paint. We'll go through the colors once I start to use them. And I have some of this Dollar Tree greenery. I got some twine and my scissors. I'm starting out cutting this um, jute cord off of the sign and we will cover the back of that sign. Because I like my projects to be nice, neat, and finished, I am going in with my Dollar Tree spackle and filling those holes in. So everything is nice, neat, and seamless when I paint it. I'm going to take my ruler and measure the width of this project so it gives me, or the width of this board, because it gives me an idea of how many lines at two inches a part that I can get in this space. It still didn't come out quite even, but it's to mimic wood, and wood isn't always very even going straight across, especially the way I like it old and weathered. It's never going to be nice, neat, and even, but I thought I'd give it a try. It didn't work, but this is still beautiful, and it is my favorite DIY of the three that I'm showing you today. So now that I got my lines drawn, I'm going back and I am giving this a good like indentation i am making it look like wood and this is one of those dollar tree whittling tools they come in a pack of four so you get four little unique tools that you can use and this one is perfect for scoring mdf board you can use a sharpie if you don't have this tool but if you see these at dollar tree pick them up if you like things old and weathered pick them up because this is i love using this for this very reason now I'm going over it in my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and giving it just one rough coat. I, I don't care if the wood shows through because you guys know I'm going to distress it anyway. Taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew and I'm just going over those lines or indentations that I made. Now I'm going in with my Gator Sander from Walmart and I'm going to soften those lines up, making it look old, weathered, and distressed because it's my favorite. You guys, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you like it, and it pushes me out a little bit more so everyone else can see me too. So I went in with my pencil, did a little bit of hand lettering. I did home grown and bunny bait. And I, the picture that I showed you, the paper that I showed you, I tend to sketch my designs out. If I got something in my head and I have a project that I want to do, I sketch it out. And I may not do it the minute that I sketch it, but when it's in my head, I want to get it sketched out a little bit so that I don't forget what I was going to do. So I was showing you my little sketch of what I did um, for this project so that I could come back to it and do it at a later time. Um, I don't always sketch everything out. Some things are very simple and easy to remember, but this one I wanted to remember exactly the way I saw it, the way I pictured it. So I did a little sketch of it. I am not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not. But little simple things like this, I can sketch. All right, back to the DIY. I took a piece of that fabric and way too much Mod Podge. <laughs> Pick some of that up and put it back in the bottle. I took a piece of that fabric and I um, cut it out in the shape of a carrot, or at least what looked like the shape of a carrot to me. And I'm just getting it Mod Podge down to the drawing because I wanted there to be some texture and some dimension to this DIY. I love adding those elements to it. It just makes it so much prettier to me. It just looks, I don't know, I can't explain it, but you guys see it. So I took that fabric and I did a fabric carrot and then the other ones will just be painted. Going in with my Hello Hobby chalk paint and the color pumpkin and just going around the edges of the carrot you guys have seen me do these before. I left a little bit of the white paint or the plaster paint underneath showing through. And I will do the same thing with the greenery. 
and I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color celery and I'm not going to paint everything nice and neat and just solid. I want there to be an old weathered look to this. So to do that, I just leave some of the white showing underneath and I don't paint everything so neat. That way it looks distressed with me without me having to actually sand it down and distress it so much. I let the paint do the distress look for me on this DIY. Going in with my Sharpie as always and just making my letters darker. Cleaning up any pencil lines with my eraser. And now I'm going to take my greenery. I love this greenery. Dollar Tree came out with this this year. And I grabbed, I think, at least six of them, at least, because I know I'm going to use them all season long, like throughout the summer when I'm doing farmhouse decor. I will be using this greenery because I really think it's so pretty. So I'm going to take that greenery and just hot glue it. Use a little bit of hot glue. Do not use a lot because this greenery is very plasticky, and that hot glue will melt it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so we're just going to do a dab of glue and get this greenery glued to the top of the carrots. And you're going to want to leave some of your actual hand-painted greenery showing. You went through all the trouble to hand-paint it, and you don't want to cover it up completely. You want it to show through. Now I'm going to take my jute twine. I'm just measuring around those carrots to see how much I want to use and where I want it to sit. And I'm going to take this little tool that I got. And I don't, I think it's called an awl. Not really sure. Comment down below. I don't know. I got it from Harbor Freight. It came in a pack of three or four. And I'm just going to, it's perfect for poking holes in MDF, as you can see. So I'm just going to poke a hole on either side of those carrots because I want dimension, dimension, dimension. I want to run that jute cord around the carrots, through that board, and around and through again, and then tie a bow. I want there to be dimension, and this does exactly that. So I just made a jute bow, and I'm just going to glue it to the front of the carrots. And that just gives it some dimension. It really does. Texture, dimension, all of the things. And that is why this is my favorite DIY. So I'm going back in with my Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew. Nope, this is hazelnut. In the color hazelnut, I'm just going to make those um, shadow marks on the carrot or the lines that look like um, where the carrot has ridges and, and rough. Rough points on it. So here is the final DIY. I love it. I hope you guys do too. Just came out so cute. I did go ahead, as you can see at the top, and add some jute twine. I just poked two holes at the top, pulled the jute through, tied knots on either side, because I think that really added to um, the texture and everything that's going on as well. Moving on to DIY number three, and the last one for this video, I have some various ribbon and twine, hot glue, or hot glue, I'll be using hot glue and jumbo glue stick, scissors, I've got this beautiful bead um, garland from Joanne Fabrics, I've got one of the Dollar Tree wood rounds, and I have the farmhouse calendar, and I've been seeing everybody do this little round bunny from the calendar, 
He looks like he's nestled in the grass among the eggs and he's just sleeping and it's so pretty. So I wanted to do my take on it. So here we go. I'm just going to set it on the wood round, kind of see where I want it to go, what I want to cut off of it and what I want to leave. And then I'm just going to measure that out and get it cut. So now I'm going to use my jumbo wood glue stick and I'm going to get this bunny glued onto this wood round that I have left over from Valentine's Day. And I'm actually going to glue it to the front of it so that the back of it is nice and clean and I don't have to cover it. Now that that's done, I'm going to take these brightly colored eggs, and I did tell you in previous video that I love the muted colors, and I do, but for this, it was already brightly colored, so I stuck with the theme. I have these little miniature brightly colored eggs that I picked up a year ago at Dollar General. Just going to cut them in half, because I want them to lay flat, and I'm just going to glue the same colored egg to the same colored egg on the print. That made this super easy. And I was lucky that I had all the same colors in that bag that they have on this print. That worked out so well. Now that I've got it all glued down, just getting rid of the glue strings that are hanging on, I got this beaded rose garden, garland from Joanne Fabrics. Um, it was on sale. I think I paid maybe $4 for it using that wonderful wood tool that I like that makes holes and everything. Um, I just put about eight holes all the way around in this wood round because I am going to attach this with some paddle wire that I got from Dollar Tree. Now, this is where I got a little hiccup, I feel like. I put boxwood greenery from Walmart at the bottom. I don't love it. So um, in this video, you'll see it, and in the reveal, you'll see it, but I'm going to end up taking that off of there. I think it was too much, and you'll see why. Adding a dab of glue to the back of the paddle wire keeps it from damaging my surface or my wall. So I decided to put a bow at the top of this DIY. And here's that bow that we made in the other video, but did not use. I'm using it for this video. I love the bow, but once the bow was on top, the greenery on the bottom to me is overkill. It's too much. Comment down below if you feel the same. So I ended up... Um, like I said, not in the reveal or in this video, but I ended up taking that greenery off. You'll still see it on in the final reveal, but I didn't like it. Without that greenery, I think it looks so much better. And so here it is, you guys. I do, I do love it. I do think it's really, really cute without the greenery on the bottom. I still like the beaded garland, that will stay, but the greenery was just a little bit too much, I think. Sometimes less really is more, so I think it's super cute without it. Again, comment down below, let me know what you think.
And here's the final reveal of all the things that I made for you today. If you made it to this point in the video and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? It's free. And I would love to have you as part of the Cute and Crafty family. So if you do decide to subscribe today, please don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss out on another Cute and Crafty DIY with D. And if you are so inclined, please go over to my Facebook group, D's Cute and Crafty DIY Divas. Ask to become a member over there as well and share your DIY projects with us. We have a beautiful little community over there and it's growing every day where we get on and share our craft ideals and get inspiration from each other and help each other on DIY projects and what to do with this or that. And I absolutely love it. I appreciate you guys so, so much. So until I see you in my next one, be blessed, be safe, and craft something beautiful today, you guys. Bye.